Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle Book Review of February 1964, Omnibus Edition from Marvel Comics. Now, this is 480 pages. I paid £62 for it. I think the price is now about 85 on Amazon. Of course, you can find it probably cheaper for about 50 and 52 pounds. I've seen as well. Although it's $100, weirdly, it's $100 for the other ones, and they've actually got a lot more pages. So it's very strange. And the other ones being in the part of the series, I guess, of monthly issues. This is the July 1963 one, which is pretty good, of course. That's got Avengers and X-Men and a few others, of course. You've got the 1962 one there. You've got Thor and Spidey. And you, of course, got the Fantastic Four one, August 1961. You can see, obviously, a very similar theme in the cover. The covers, I think, are absolutely lovely. Lovely snapshot of that time. You can see all the characters in it. And, of course, also another great story in it, the origin of the Watchers. You've got the Enchantress and Doctor Strange. I love that pairing. I don't think the Enchantress and Doctor Strange ever probably had that many battles, certainly in the sort of Silver Age comics. And you've got other characters as well, all the way through. Of course, you've got the X-Men, the Executioner, Iceman, and the Hulk versus the Thing, Daredevil, of course, Doctor Octopus. We'll see there, Spidey, and many others. As always, you've got the, all the covers on the back. I love the fact they include these. One of the things I've always had problems with, with the DC ones, sometimes they, sometimes they do it. Sometimes then they forget, and you've got the sort of just this bland sort of cover, the back bit. But now you've got here Daredevil number one. Also, you've got Tales to Astonish, Modeling with Millie. Of course, many of these stories have been reprinted before, and I think that's the problem with a lot of these, these ones. Lots of people say, I don't buy I'm not going to buy this. Why am I going to buy this? Because I've got them all before. Now, quite a few of them, they're not generally available. Keep Colt out of all. But of course, if you're not into Westerns, I guess that's in there. Or obviously the Patsy and Hetty. And also Two Gun Kid, and, and these ones have been just done in epics. But of course, you've got uh, Strange Tales, actually saying that, they've only just been done in completes, they haven't actually. So there's quite a few that have still not been really done into omnibus collections. I'd love to see those ones as omnibuses. Anyway, let's go through the actual book, but actually saying that, shows the cover of this. So you've got here, 1964, part of, like I say, a part of a series, and I've really enjoyed all these ones. I mean, I, I think probably my favourite probably is the 1963 one. I do love that one. But the 61 one's great as well. The 61 one's got a lot more variety of the sort of more unusual stories, all the ones that sort of never been reprinted, Kathy and all those sort of ones. This one is starting to get into the more, like all of those sort of comics have gone. So you've only got read down to Two Gun Kid, etc. But you've got Daredevil on there. Look at that, 1964 and Daredevil, obviously from issue one. And then you've got the back, you've got the Fantastic Four, the Hulk versus the Avengers, etc. Now, I don't know why they didn't do the Watcher on the back. That would have been personally a better choice because that is also the origin of the Watcher. Obviously not a key story particularly, but still, I think, obviously a more important story than probably the other one. Though that one was a better story, of course. Right, let's go for the book. I love this one. This is just great. Look at that screech. Obviously, they've got the brakes. They've got problem with the brakes. Didn't they test the brakes before they go out in a van called Ajax Atomic Labs, radioactive materials? I hope they were put out of business after that. Really? That's appalling. Going hard, you know, hurtling through the streets in a van that they didn't test. That's crazy. Anyway, with radioactive material, at least they told everyone it was radioactive material so they could all get out of the way. Oh, don't worry about it. We just spread all that material all across the city. Then you've got obviously all the various... Characters there, and had other character there. Very odd choices of characters there, but still, got lots of obviously details, all the various people involved, special thanks, etc. As well as, of course, all the wonderful artists and writers, etc. who were involved. Jack Kirby, Stan Goldberg, Dick Ayers. Now, Bill Everett, you think, would have been... So why didn't they just do it all the same size? Just seems unusual. They just reduced the size down for Larry Lieber and Bill Everett. And then you've got all the stories... And you can see Daredevil in one. Look at how many different stories you've got in them as well. Quite a lot of stories. So you've got Millie the Model. You've got about seven, eight stories in that. Also Fantastic Four. You've even got a Fantastic Four fan page. Obviously not a story, but still. Two Gun Kid, that's got four stories. Tales of Suspense has got you know, about five stories. And then continue on there. And of course you've got... Wow, that's very odd. Look at that. The way chopping off poor old Doc Ock there. And that's actually one problem, I think, with this is... It's slightly crunched to this. It's, it does feel a bit awkward when I'm holding it like this. But still, let's get on to the actual stories. Oh, introduction as well. Always good. And into Daredevil. The origin of Daredevil. 
I always loved that where you've got the origin of Daredevil and you've got obviously there all the various characters, the cast, things. There's one bit that struck me. Where is that? I can't see it now. Oh, no, I can't see it. It was just something struck me later. Oh, there was an advert I saw when I was going through this. I thought, that's very strange. Why did they put a hyphen with Daredevil? Sometimes they do, sometimes they didn't do it. But this story, Bill Everett. Now, I didn't realise a bit of Jack Kirby involvement. Of course, you can actually see Jack Kirby when you look at the front cover. You see, obviously, there, definitely Jack Kirby. But it's still, I didn't know that at the time. I must admit, I didn't know this was Bill Everett's artwork at the time. Oh, and I love, of course, these lovely adverts. You've got Tales to Astonish and you've got Strange Tales. Two more triumphs from Marvel. There we go. And I love also you get his training regime as well, which is good. He's just very happy with himself. Obviously dealing with the fixer. Not a good idea. The fixer doesn't look like a great guy, does he? And there it is, the van going to the street. I can't, something's wrong. She won't stop. Really shouldn't mean going that fast. Anyway, mere quibble on that one. Tales to Astonish, Giant Man, on the trail of Human Top. Now, this isn't the first story to Human Top. I really enjoyed the Human Top story, the earlier one. I enjoyed this one as well. And you can see him actually showing, demonstrating. Nicely actually filmed it as well, showing how, obviously, he was almost untouchable. Uncatchable, even. <laughs> He's made untouchable up. He could have been untouchable as well. Gosh, we never get tired of seeing these old, great old newsreel films, Giant Man. Showing off your great skills of first stuff. He's even got a giant man fan club. Sadly, it did not help him when it came to actually keeping his comic book going. I always felt sorry for that. I just thought it was, I really liked the giant man stories and the Ant Man ones. They were good. I don't know why they didn't go occasionally have more Ant Man stories intermixed with giant man instead of just keeping him permanent giant man. And then two more triumphs. You've got Spider Man and the Fantastic Four. Of course, the issues are in this book. Also, you've got the wasp. Now, this, unfortunately, is not a wasp tale. This is just one where she tells a tale. Always feels like that they just had some sort of artwork left over. And they would sort of like introduce it with her. And the story didn't really yet feature her at all. And she would just round it up at the end. That was it. Now, a couple of stories later, they did actually include proper wasp stories. Then, on to the next story, which is Modeling with Millie. Now, of course, these haven't been reprinted. I suspect... We'll never see a Modern with Millie omnibus collection. It would be nice to see, or maybe an epic collection. But we've got Millie's Foster Child. Now, they often had like 10 stories, 9, 10 stories, and there's quite a lot of characters turned up. Many of them I can never remember, like Clicker and Chili and all those sort of characters. But another story. And also, you'd always get these as well. Millie's Fashion Pit. Now, I love the fact that they were always sent in by various people. Karen Blackmer from Barrington, Michigan. All those things, I just think that's just absolutely wonderful. I was always wondering, think, really? Did people do that? Well, of course they did. They did that in UK comics as well, send up various things. <laughs> and also you got Chili's Club. Now, Chili was the antagonist character in the stories. You got her there, and she'd have obviously a different set of uh, things. And you can, I suppose people, I don't know if they actually cut them out. Were they cut out? They look like good. you could sort of stick them on. Maybe people would dress them, I don't know. And also you got here, Winter Witchery as well. Obviously, there, Millie's one. Also, a text story again, Love From Afar. And yet more, <laughs> she featured a lot of these. Now, when I actually say there was 10 stories, there weren't really 10 stories. There were actually, obviously, these individual pin-up pages, or obviously, whatever, I don't know what you call them. But anyway, Time for the Teens, it says there, and Tony Sheds a Tear. So you obviously had another character in this book. And on to the next one, Chili, the Toast of TV. Quite often, they would obviously turn out to be not so good. Millie was, of course, the one that always generally won out. And also, you've got hairstyles as well. Heavenly hairstyles. Just lovely, isn't it? And you've got also... And actually, it's amazing how many people did send in just for hairstyles. Just absolutely brilliant. However, we've got that. And then on to the next story. Journey into Mystery. Probably one of my favourite early stories. The Enchantress and the Executioner. I think they were the best characters at that point. After that, they changed quite a lot. But at the time, I really, really loved this one. Immortal versus Immortal. And I think this just looks absolutely amazing. There she is, in the, obviously, in the car, looking absolutely stunning. She goes in, of course, to seduce... No, it's never going to work with Thor or Blake, Dr. Blake. Falls forward. And, of course, at that point, Jane Foster walks in. But you've got the executioner as well. There, the executioner pushes, uh, ah, pretty impressive. But you know the executioner never beats Thor. I don't think he ever beat anyone. 
I think he ended up being more of a hero character, I think, later on. But still, at this point, of course, more villainous character. And, of course, there's a magic spell applied as well. However, the next story is one of these sort of weird ones. Well, they did quite a few. I want to be immortal. And, of course, there's always twists. And I can't remember. Quite often, you like turn into a rock or something or various tree or something. Of course, that was immortality. I don't know what it is. I think there is a rock. <laughs> Whatever it is. However... Daredevil, but the wind, I think it's odd here. Daredevil with a hyphen. Really, I suppose they probably because they did that with the Spider Man. So, in the sensational Spider Man with a hyphen, they put Daredevil hyphen. Of course, above it says Daredevil. Very strange. And of course, it gives a bit of detail saying, present, destined to become the smash success of 1964. See what the shouting's about. Get your copy today. And of course, it's got the good old statement of ownership. How odd. Put that in the advert side, but still. Tales of Asgard as well, which is always good. And then into another Patsy Walker story or another one who's sort of like teen stories. I don't know what they were. Humor stories, teen stories, modeling stories. Because they often feature things like fashion. So you've got Patsy's fashion cutouts. Again, I wonder, did they actually make them so you could cut them out? Now, I've never seen the cutout ones. Maybe the cutout ones have been long destroyed. I guess they have. Obviously, collectors probably have looked at them and thought, straight in the bin kind of thing. Because obviously sometimes it probably destroys the story on the, and I doubt if these ones are collected as much as the other ones. I expect if you're, the great scale of things that you see the collecting the Spider-Man, Hulk, etc., etc., a lot, probably Millie, a lot less, and also Patsy Walker, I'd imagine. But still, happy ever after. Okay, and another one, you have got Hedy, of course, Patsy and Hedy, and another one here, Party Pretties. <laughs> yeah. That was good. But again, lots of people sending these in. I expect it must have been absolutely wonderful to pick up these comics later on and see your name printed in with your design. Now, of course, it's been redrawn. They're not drawn as by the person. But I think that's just still pretty impressive, isn't it, you, to get that thing. But they never did that with the Thor comics and things. So people could write, send in little things. This is what Don Blake should have looked like or whatever. And sort of, you know, they have a page of you. And you oh, wow, I've got my drawing in there. For art's sake... That was the one, another story. And now, on to the two-gun kid. I always forget which one's which. You've got Rawhide kid, 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 kid two-gun kid. There were lots of them. So I always mix them up. Anyway, this one's the two-gun kid. And you've got Goliath. Now, I don't know. I wonder if anyone's ever said that's a pre-story, obviously, before when he became Goliath. Obviously, Giant Man became Goliath. I don't know. Maybe that name was obviously fairly familiar, wasn't it? But still... Got a Goliath character. He's obviously got no secret powers of growing or getting smaller or anything. He's just a standard, pretty tall guy. And there's a twist at the end. Pretty what's his name twist as well. Very unusual one. And now on to the next story. Now this which one's this one's the six gun. Six gun showdown. Was that a character called Six Gun? Oh <laughs> that'd be pretty impressive with Six Gun Kid. However, Journey into Mystery, of course, a brilliant, another another Marvel miles, masterpiece. I was going to say milestone, but that's a, in the fabulous Marvel style. They loved that sort of stuff, didn't they? And you got him going off there. Again, I'm not certain. Lawman's Bluff. Aha. The Power of Iron Man. Now, Black Widow's right. There was quite a few stories with this, where you had sort of like another one, obviously the human top. Now you've got the Black Widow strikes again. So you got there. Now, this was before the story, I think, of obviously Hawkeye. Hawkeye was uh, probably, I think, was the next story came along. Maybe they'll do one for Hawkeye. That could be a possible one, wouldn't it? There she is, Black Widow. Slightly different from the Black Widow that we're obviously more familiar with. The Girl Who Can Move Mountains. What a great title. And a very bit unusual bit of artwork there. <laughs> Stuck in that story. I always wondered who drew these ones. Because they're really odd, doesn't it? I mean, that looks like someone's just... Probably something I would have knocked up. Andrew, put knock up this. Oh, yeah, it looks terrible. But still, there she is. She's not moving mountains, but she's moving a building. That's a bit of good. Maybe it doesn't sound as good. Moving who moves buildings. I don't know if she actually moves a mountain. That would be pretty impressive, wouldn't it? Somewhere. Still, you've also got this of course, and yet another one of these classic stories with they feature. They've often had lots of science fiction stories in those tales for the suspense. And also, the next story, which I think should be, I say on the back, 
the good old, the way it began. The way it began. And you've got there the watcher looking over an operation. Of course, he goes there. Believe my brain is so advanced. My story. He could tell how he could save everyone's life. And of course, he shouldn't do that because, of course, which I always think is a bit odd. Of course, he completely ignores that most of the time anyway. He's always turning up, trying to save everyone. But still. Yeah, you've got the, they go in some whatever it is, zeta rays, beta rays, whatever it is. There's, oh, delta rays, I knew it was going to be something like that. Delta rays will keep us young and spry for another full century. That's very convenient. Surely that, do they do that story still, that one still? They might do. But still, they go off, they turn themselves into energy and fly off and give nuclear energy to people. Surely if they got these immortality things, wouldn't that have been easier just to give them that? than the other secret of nuclear energy. Maybe give them a bit more life and time to spend to develop things, technology. However, of course, it doesn't go well. I think, of course, this is more a tale for us than, uh, than any alien civilization. But the thing is I love is the fact that you've got one of the characters turned around, one of the watchers, turns around and says, oh, we shouldn't do it again. One person just comes up and says, why well, we shouldn't do it again. And then from ever, ever again, they never do it. Actually, the watchers don't particularly look like the watchers that we see later. They did change slightly. However, unmasked by Dr. Octopus. Good old Doc Ock there. Again, another story where obviously a character's returning. I think he's returned a few times since then. And I think in many ways, I've, when I first looked at this, I thought it was a Craven story because, of course, you've got the animals there. Jameson, of course, tapping away, very angry, sort of staring and shaking his fist at uh, Spidey there. A great story, of course, Steve Ditko, always brilliant. And, well, you know he wins. Of course he does. And you've got the spider's web. There's not many with these sort of letters pages, but, of course, Spidey did have one. Now, at this point, they didn't really do the checklist as often. So you can see their sort of brief mention. You've got Fantastic Four, issue 26, but that's it. And I love this. Spider-Man 8 was a different and also, good. Oh, although good, somewhat of a letdown. Spider-Man versus the Human Torch made Spider-Man look like a troublemaker. Certainly the case. And then you've got, of course, the next story, Human Torch meets the Iceman. What about that? Love that strange tale one. Again, one that has not been collected in an omnibus, as far as I'm aware. I don't think there's a Strange Tales Human Torch set. It'd be nice if they did. I love those stories. And you can see there, of course, you've got the X-Men. Great way, of course, of saying, buy the X-Men comic. Here's the X-Men. Actually, I don't know why he didn't do that more often. Human Torch meets Daredevil. Human Torch meets whoever. Iron Man, and so on. They could have done a whole lot of these storylines just to introduce... Of course, the villains are useless in this. They're on a cruise. On a cruise, and of course, it's a great opportunity for two great characters, who I think should have turned up more often. I don't know why they didn't introduce... Bring, obviously, the Iceman into more of the stories of the Strange. So maybe they would have been a lot more popular. They could have introduced Spider-Man. Why didn't they bring Spider-Man into the stories more often? They're like Thing. That was it. Thing and uh, Torch. Could never understand that bit. But of course you've got Doctor Strange, The House of Shadows. I love that one. That's a real crackingly good story. Tale of eerie enchantment told in the Marvel manner. It was a classic as far as I I just loved it when all these people, of course, they go into the house. And he's sort of got their... My fears have been confirmed. And of course he floats there. No, everyone disbelieves, of course. And they get more triumphs. Of course, Doc Ock, and there you've got the Avengers take over. And then we've got Millie again. Millie appeared quite a few times here. I don't know which one this was, actually. This was a different Millie one. Oh, this is just Millie, the model. A new career for Millie. Oh, she's told something and she's just going to faint. And Clicker comes in. Clicker, what a great name. Clicker! Time for Tony. Another character, obviously, in the story. A bell on wheels. Oh, Clicker again. Hang on, that. Clicker looks a bit different from one story to the next. That's very odd, isn't it? However, Millie's fanciest frocks. Again, you get one more. I love that. Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis fashionable. I can't even see any Fleur de Lis in that, but anyway. Obviously, it just sounds good, but there's no Fleur de Lis design as far as I can see there. Who knows? But still, we've got those stories and then into a classic, an absolute classic. Though I must admit, I preferred the one that was before. Issue number 25, but this one is Fantastic Four number 26, The Avengers Take Over. And of course, got the Hulk still battling away the other thing. Poor old thing finally realises he's not actually as strong as the Hulk. 
I know it's very, to be honest, I always felt that uh, Sue Storm was the most powerful of all the characters in Fantastic Four. Unfortunately, she never really got to actually show that, certainly during the obviously the first hundred odd issues. But this was a great story. Of course, you've got the Avengers and Captain America comes into the story. Of course, Captain America probably only just about in the Avengers at that point. Obviously, issue four was the previous month or so. So you've got that Fantastic Four fan page. And this one, for some weird reason, does actually include the checklist. And this does actually feature all the stories that are included in here. And you've got here the wonderful Wasp, though it doesn't mention about the human top, which is very odd. And next issue features the return of Submariner, etc., etc. Yes, it all looks yeah, consistent with this. Though some of the adverts are not consistent. It says blah, 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 site on sale. And you're thinking, well, that doesn't make sense because it's not in this book. Dr. Danger. I cracked. Now, that's a good character. That's a great character name. I mean, the character's not very good, but Dr. Danger. What a great character. I said Dr. Doom. We've got Dr. Danger. Dr. Danger and his invisible, visible gunman. <laughs> The story conclusion is absolutely silly, but it's still a good concept. Obviously holding a gun. Could have actually crack, crack all the lovely bits there. And yet more obviously adverts. They love putting the adverts of these ones. They? Gunman's Quest. Again, this is Gunman Stark. I wonder if a relation, obviously, of Tony Stark. Maybe a very early thing they could have done more story like there with that one. However, next one, Lava Men. Not one of the best stories, but it is a story, of course, featuring the Hulk. Of course, the Hulk at this point had actually left the Avengers. And we've got Captain America and team and all walking away. Of course, you've got Iron Man in his very early sort of yellow and red. They're very unusual looking. Rick Jones as well. Got this guy poking through the earth. And, of course, the world is about to end or whatever as usual. And, of course, to save it, well, the Avengers kick in. But the Hulk comes along as well, which is really handy. You've got Thunderbolt Ross there as well. And on to the next story, Sergeant Fury. Now, I assume issue seven. Now, this is an epic collection, The Court Martial of Sergeant Fury. Really good issue, I think. I love the Sergeant Fury ones, and I would love to see them in Omnibus edition. Sadly, they yet to be collected in Omnibus. I think they're in some of the Jack Kirby ones with the war ones. But that's about it. There's a lot of the, the Sergeant Fury ones haven't been collected. So you've got there. I think these are great little tales. And yet more, of course, adverts you've got there, the strange tales. Now, weirdly, that one is advertising the Plant Man story. Now on sale, I guess, of course, it was probably last month's one. And also, of course, The Coming of the Magician. I think The Coming of the Magician was also in a Wasp story as well. You've got X-Men, the angel trapped. Of course, this is the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Trapped one X-Men. The return, yet another return story. Very strange. They really obviously decided for that month, lots of return stories. Always a great one. Of course, you've got the blue Quicksilver there and a green Scarlet Witch, which I always thought was slightly odd. When her name was Scarlet Witch, she was in green. Very peculiar. She's in pink or red there, but on the cover, green. And you've got, got Mastermind the background there looking decidedly very evil looking but all the characters you got there the toad and everyone obviously watching tv oh that's very strange let's investigate at that point however don't know why i didn't recognize that he was the toad but the story's great of course you go to asteroid i think it was asteroid m wasn't it with magneto the next story was a brilliant one as well submariner i love that one Patsy and Hetty. Yeah, another one of these Patsy. They've got, they did quite a few of these Patsy. I think it was Patsy's and her pals. Patsy's and Patsy and blah, blah, blah. Loads of Patsy stories, as well as, of course, middly ones as well. However, Hetty wins again. Not that I'm certain that actually Hetty ever actually won. But you've got Patsy pin-up page. Looks always good. Victorian vision, high-waisted empire style. And also a tres, tre elegante or something or whatever. A <laughs> daintily ruffled. I think that's just great. Send your fashion designs. Absolutely brilliant, I think, idea. Also, yeah, more hairdos as well. Yet another text story. And this one's weird. Ellen, another character. Instead of using Patsy Walker or, of course, Hedy, they've gone for Ellen instead. In this case, they've advertised Patsy Walker. Now on sale. Don't miss it. And you've got a lovely team up. Rawhide Kid, this time meeting the Two-Gun Kid. Together for the first time. Or the very first time, even. Rawhide Kid meets the Two-Gun Kid. Luckily, 
It says here, by special arrangement with the publisher of Two Gun Kid magazine on sale everywhere throughout the free world. I love that. Written by Stan Lee, Dick Ayers and Artie Semi. However, the story is pretty good, but of course, they end up being friends at the end. Or do they? Who knows? In this one, they advertise the Avengers, as well as the fastest draw. I mean, look at that. That's a pretty dramatic, <laughs> brilliant, isn't it? Splash. That was Larry Lieber. They tell the tale of the fastest guns like Earp, Hickok and Billy the Kid. And of course, you've got here, no legends were written about this character. And that was that. Here's the bonus material. The bonus material is actually really good. The only depressing thing about it is they didn't include all the pages. I would love to have seen the entire Daredevil one. Maybe, of course, they're not available. But the artwork is superb. When you actually see the original artwork and, you, of course, compare it with, obviously, the coloured version, this just looks so much better. I would love to see books of this brilliant artwork. I mean, it would be amazing. I don't know why Marvel have never actually brought out sort of a, an artist edition set of stories like this. I would love to see them because it's just brilliant. It includes quite a few pages. You've got page two, page three, page five, <laughs> some page eight, page 16, and page 27. And page 11, right? Oh no, we're off. <laughs> completely off onto another story by that point. But still, it's just great to see Daredevil, the first issue. But it would have been great to have seen the entire set. But just maybe it's just not available. I don't know. But you've also got, of course, Astonish 55 there. And also another Astonish 55. That's obviously the Wasp one. And then the next one, you've got Thor, as well as Tales of Suspense. You've, of course, got Black Widow, showing, of course, the Crimson Dynamo. Great character. And the next one... Goliath, there's Goliath again. So it's got some really great original pages there. I think it's a lovely addition to the book. However, the rest is very odd. You've got lots of Daredevil at the back, and it's just strange. You've got the Marvel superhero, of course, absolutely brilliant. I love that one, actually. That was quite a nice one with Avengers number two. There's, of course, also a lovely, timely story, which is good, the Human Torch versus Submariner. But you've got Daredevil number one. A real good bit there of Everett. And then on to some odd bits of Daredevil. It's strange. What a strange inclusion. I would have loved more original ink pages. Still pretty good. But luckily, at the back, they include this. A lovely little index to all of the characters. Now, who is that? Number 31. Oh, apparently low car. <laughs> I wouldn't have known. Must have, if you did a sort of mastermind quiz and they came up with that question, who's this character? I would have gone, no idea. Absolutely no idea. I think most of them I probably could tell, even though looking down the list, I can, yes, I think I could tell all of those characters. I probably would have got Kid Colt probably wrong. I would have said Raw High Kid or something, or Two Gun Kid. I always get those two wrong. Also, Patsy Walker, of course, Two Gun Kid, and Mac, Matt Hawk, apparently there. Patsy Walker, you've got uh, Enchantress, Doctor Strange, and so on. And that's it. What a lovely book. I absolutely love this series, and also the other ones, of course, as well. I really hope they continue them, but I suspect this probably must be the end. Unless they do one for Silver Surfer, maybe. Maybe the Captain Marvel first issue. I would find that very unusual. They do. I mean, there's so many that... I wish they had gone, done more with the 1961, 62, 63 period. But still, I've absolutely loved it. So if this is the end, well, that's it. Brilliant, really good series. 1964, I love it. Perhaps not for everyone. Of course, like I say, lots of these stories have been reprinted in other omnibuses. So if you've got, of course, the Thor omnibus, number one, you've got, the, of course, the Spidey one, all those sort of ones, you're going to have a lot of this material ready. But there's also a lot of great ones like Patsy Walker, as well as the Westerns, that haven't been reprinted. But by this time, of course, they stopped doing all the war comics. I didn't see Sergeant Fury, but um, there was lots of other war comics before that. I love it. Absolutely brilliant book. So there... Yeah, February 1964, really, really recommended set. And I'll just quickly show the cover again. See, instead of showing that, this one, February 1964, and all the comics that you've got in the book. 